in the last stream, we took a bit of a detour away from the Twilight Forest and delved for the first time into a little bit of Britannia. And we did that up in this room right here. We set up this system with the Thermalilies producing an infinite amount of mana uh, due to the fact that we have a system that can automatically create Thermalilies, place Thermalilies, and then break those Thermalilies over and over and over again, allowing us to continually produce an infinite amount of mana using our infinite amount of lava uh, that we have in our creative fluid tank. And what I've gone ahead and done between streams is basically duplicated the setup that we had in the last stream so that now we have a grand total of eight Thermalilies all working all of the time to produce mana for us. Now, you may notice that as of right now, we're actually not producing any mana, and that is because over here, all four of these mana pools are full. Now, I did make this between streams. This is the mana splitter. It is super easy to make. It's just six living rock with two mana steel ingots. And the idea of this is that you can place it just like this between four mana pools. And then if you point your mana spreaders at the mana splitter, instead of just filling up one mana pool, it will then go ahead and fill up four mana pools simultaneously, uh, thus allowing me to leave this between streams and come back to four full mana pools. As of right now, what I've done temporarily is I have, uh, also I've made a new little elevator over here that takes me down to this room. I have temporarily picked up the redstone repeater from here. So right now, the thermal lilies are not being broken and replaced, uh, but as soon as we start using the mana, we can go ahead and replace that down and get this system up and running again. But basically, right here, we have four mana pools full of mana. That is going to be good for eight terrestrial ingots. We do also have the mana left over from the last stream over in here as well. I'm going to leave this here for now because we are going to have to make a few more runes if we're going to get the boots, the leggings, and the helmet from Batania. Each one of these does require a different kind of rune. But uh, the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and grab eight diamonds to make eight mana diamonds. We're going to grab eight iron ingots so we can get eight mana steel. And then we'll also grab eight ender pearls so that we can make eight mana pearls as well. And we can do this in here. It doesn't really matter where we do this. We'll make eight of you, eight of you. And you'll see right away all of the mana uh, spreaders come back online because they were all full of mana. Uh, so were the thermalities, but they actually weren't sending it over because they had nowhere to send it. So real quick, we can go and I do need to get used to this new elevator here, but we can place this down like so, set that back to maximum. And that should continue the cycle of producing an infinite amount of mana from all of those thermalities. And now all we have to do is one by one, drop these onto this uh, agglomeration plate to begin the process of making Terra Steel. Of course, before I do that, I do need to move this spark here. I believe if you shift right click with the wand of the forest, you can pop the spark off of a mana pool and then place it, of course, onto a new mana pool like that. And then now if we do one, two and three, that should begin the Terra Steel making process and should allow our mana spreaders to pump even more mana into those mana pools. While that does its thing, you may be wondering why the mana spreaders are kind of so haphazardly spread out. The reason for that, uh, I didn't really explain too much in the last stream, is that whenever a Batania flower is placed, it will automatically attach itself to the nearest mana spreader. And so if I were to put all of these flowers down so that this was the closest mana spreader, all of them would try and send their mana through that one mana spreader, which is not what we want because that one mana spreader is not fast enough to move all of the mana from all of the thermalities. So what I've done here is through a bit of trial and error, I've set up these mana spreaders so that each one of them is only closest to one of the thermalities. Like this one here is closest to this, this one here is closest to this, this one here is closest to this, and this one here is closest to this. If any of these move a bit closer, they end up connecting to the wrong mana spreaders, and then that ends up being a little bit less efficient than it could be. And there we go, we now have nine Terra Steel ingots. That's all of the Terra Steel that we're going to need in order to make the Terra Steel armor. And so now all we need to do is craft up the Rune of Winter, which I'll bookmark, the Rune of Autumn, which I'll bookmark, and the Rune of Spring. So the Rune of Spring is super easy. It requires one Rune of Water, one Rune of Fire, three saplings, and one Wheat. And the good news about using runes to make runes is that I'm fairly certain we get these runes back. I don't believe that they're actively consumed in the rune-making process. Now, the problem here 
is that we don't have any saplings. The Twitch chat has reminded me that we can, of course, go to the Twilight Forest and there should be saplings over in here. Now, as you may be aware, if you watched the last episode, this is a different spawn location to our uh, previous spawn location. And that is because between streams, I did go ahead and recreate the Twilight Forest. Uh, thankfully, it now loads substantially faster than it did previously. Uh, last time when we went through to the Twilight Forest, it took like three minutes for the dimension to load. It took forever. Uh, thankfully, now it's much faster and it should be a lot easier for us to find Twilight Forest bosses. In fact, we've actually spawned directly by one of the bosses, the Naga, does spawn inside of this uh, kind of stone fortress that we're right next to here. But uh, I'm hopeful that we should be able to get some uh, some saplings fairly easily from uh, from these trees. And not too long later, we now have three saplings ready to go. I think we are going to need some leaves for the uh, the Rune of Autumn, so we might have to come back with uh, with some shears fairly shortly. Also, I'm not quite sure where my portal is. I should probably drop a, uh, a waypoint down for, uh, for future use, if we just uh, go ahead and add waypoint uh, portal. That way I should be able to find it hopefully a little faster in the future. And then the only other thing that we're going to need here is one wheat. So if we quickly just do something like this and then bone meal that up, we get our one wheat. And then over here we can do wheat, rune of fire, rune of water, sapling, sapling and sapling. I'm fairly certain it doesn't matter, yeah, which saplings you use so long as you have three of them. Do we have any living rock? We do, fantastic. And so once this is done, as per usual, we can just drop the rune on and activate it with the Wand of the Forest. As for the Rune of Autumn, again, should be pretty easy. Rune of Air, Rune of Fire, Spider Eye, and then Leaves. Leaves we don't have, but we can once again grab from the Twilight Forest. The Spider Eyes we have a bunch of. Boom, and boom. And again, we do get those runes back, which is super useful. One slightly tricky, or potentially tricky, craft here is going to be for cake. For this, we do need milk. I believe we do still have an egg. We do from our uh, chicken that we got a few streams ago. Uh, we also need wool and snow blocks. Snow blocks are very doable. We can make these with the pure daisy. Now it's a little dicey because in order to make this happen, you do have to, um, we're probably gonna have to do something like this and then put water in here. That's still within the range of the pure daisy. But obviously if we just put water directly next to the pure daisy, then the pure daisy would be uh, destroyed by the water. Let's grab a bucket. Let's fill that up. And then I'm pretty sure that if we do this and this, that uh, if we just leave those, they should, again, in about a minute or so, transform into blocks of snow that we can then uh, pick up using a shovel. In order to get a cow for the milk, for the cake, we should once again be able to just throw down some of this uh, blessed earth here. And hopefully a cow is one of the first uh, animals that we get. But once we have the cow there, we should be pretty much good to go. The snow should be almost done. Let's go ahead and check over here. It is indeed fantastic. Do we have a shovel? We do not. That is fine. Uh, temporarily, we can go ahead and craft just a, a diamond shovel, I guess. We'll get the job done. Let's pick you up. And let's also pick you up. There we go. That gets us the snowballs that we need. And we can also go ahead and replace the dirt there. Down here, we do have cows. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this uh, blessed earth because I don't want my base to be overrun with passive mobs. We could maybe do with setting up an area to kind of keep some of each animal around in. You know, we might need more milk in the future, even though I guess at some point we could create a, a tank with infinite milk. But uh, we could also do with uh, like a chicken area as well for getting more eggs and feathers and whatnot in the future. For now though, one, two, three, that is all good to go. And uh, if we quickly get a little bit more wheat, because I think right now we don't have any, which we could of course do over here, that should be everything that we need in order to make a regular old Minecraft cake. It is indeed. And so uh, if we head on over to our runic altar, we can do cake along with two snow, one block of wool, one rune of water, and one rune of earth. And boom. And after shearing a few leaves in the Twilight Forest, we can do one, two, three, along with a spider eye and the rune of fire and rune of air. Rune of fire, like so, and I think the rune of air is the last one in the system. It is indeed. And there we go. That should be all of the runes required to make our terror steel armor. All we need to do now is get 16 mana steel. Perfect. And then from there, we should have everything it takes. So let's see if we can shift click in the terror steel boots. Oh, we also need a living wood twig. Actually, we need quite a few of these. Uh, we need six in total. And as of right now, 
that should be completely fine. Never mind. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We had the perfect amount ready to go. Just to be safe, I am going to go ahead and start cooking up some more living wood for the future. I don't think that we're going to need it today, but just in case we do need it, it is going to be there for us. Man of Steel boots we can make. Man of Steel helmet we can make. And Man of Steel leggings we can also make. From there, we should be able to make Terra Steel boots along with a Terra Steel helmet and also the Terra Steel leggings. And there we go. That is all of the Terra Steel armor that we're going to be able to make. And this armor does look fantastic. Look at that. Compared to the uh, the Netherite armor, this helmet is, uh, is something else. So now that we have the armor, before we head on through to the Twilight Forest, there are one or two things I'd like to do. I would like to invest in a better sword. Right now, we just have uh, this diamond sword with capturing five and unbreaking three. Of course, we can invest in something much better from Tinker's Construct, something much more powerful and much more uh, customizable. But another thing that I would like to do is I would like to enchant this Terra Steel armor to make it even better than it currently is. Now, thankfully, we do have the Apotheosis mod installed. And so we should be able to throw some seriously powerful enchants and a lot of them onto the uh, Terra Steel armor here without too much hassle. So first things first, we of course have to make an enchanting table, which should be very easy for us to do. It is indeed between streams. I have carved out this area right here specifically for this purpose. We'll throw that down like so. And then normally what you would do in this scenario is throw down regular Minecraft bookshelves. However, with Apotheosis, there are new bookshelves we can use to get even more powerful enchants. So the entry tier is the hell shelf. That is then preceded by the C shelf, followed by the end shelf, which is, I believe, one of the most powerful uh, shelves you can get here. So the end shelf comes in three varieties. There's the regular end shelf, the draconic end shelf, and the pearlescent end shelf. And each shelf has three different enchanting stats. There is Eterna, there's Quanta, and there is Arcana. Eterna affects the maximum level that you can enchant. So I believe that the maximum level that you can enchant is double the Eterna. So you'll see here it says Eterna plus three, max forte. That means that if you have a full set of end shelves, that will give you an Eterna of forte, which means your maximum enchantment level is 80. So you can get level 80 enchantments. The Quanta and Arcana are different. I think the Quanta is like the variability in enchants. So if you have like a bunch of Quanta, your enchant could go real high or real low. So it's kind of like just, it randomizes your enchants even more. This can be super good because it means that uh, whilst you could spend 80 levels to get like a level five enchant, you could also spend 80 levels to get like a, a, a 120 level enchant. You could get something super high as well. And then Arcana, I've forgotten, but I, I believe it does tell us uh, inside of the crafting table, it does, it's right here. So Quanta is a measure of flux. It controls the variance in enchanting. Your final level will be modified by this value. And then Arcana is a measure of quality. It makes rare enchantments more common and increases the number of enchantments. So the more Arcana you have, the more likely you are to get rare enchants and the less likely you are to get common enchants, which is usually good. And it also increases the number of enchantments that you get on your tool every single time that you enchant it. So ideally, we want to kind of try and get as much uh, Eterna, as much Quanta, and as much Arcana as we possibly can. There are three variants of the end shelf. There is the regular end shelf. There is the draconic end shelf, which doesn't give you the Quanta and Arcana, but does increase the maximum Eterna. So this lets you get up to level 100 enchants. We're not going to make this because to make this, we would require a dragon head for each bookshelf, which is quite a lot of dragon heads and would require quite a lot of exploration or dragon fights to make that happen. And then there's also the pearlescent end shelf, which we might actually make because this is the same as the regular end shelf, but with even more quanta and even more arcana. And to make this, it's just the regular end shelf with ender pearls and end rods. End rods are from blaze rods, which we can get an infinite number of from blazing blood. We can make an infinite amount of that with our creative tank. And then if we head through to the end, we should be able to get some chorus fruit that we can smelt and use to make the popped chorus fruit required to make those end rods. So I might try and get a full set of pearlescent end shelves. 13 is going to get us the max Eterna, but I believe we can put down more to increase our quanta and our arcana and try and maximize these, uh, these bars here. The regular end shelf itself, by the way, requires six endstone bricks, which we can, of course, just craft from endstone, one ender pearl, one regular bookshelf, and a dragon's breath. So we are going to have to quickly head on through to the end and try and get some dragon's breath, which is going to involve resummoning the end dragon. 
Thankfully, I don't think that should be too difficult for us, especially given that somebody did place a bunch of end crystals in the end, specifically to allow us to more easily resummon the dragon. Real quick, side tangent. We have an elevator here to get to this uh, kind of middle access hatch room. One thing you can do with elevators is you can color them to look differently. So if I were to go ahead and let's say break this grass block here, we could take this grass block, and I believe if you shift right click onto an elevator, and by shift right click, I mean just regular right click onto an elevator whilst holding a block, the elevator will then look like that block. So now going forward, we can use this, but then it just looks normal and doesn't uh, add to the asymmetry of the base. One, two, three, and four. So real quick here, let's see if we can't collect some Dragon's Breath. We are, gonna, we are getting attacked by Enderman here, but that's fine. We'll go for like a half stack. That should be more than enough. And then let's quickly go ahead and see if we can't find some uh, some Chorus Fruit. We, uh, we have some wild stuff going on in the end. There's a bunch of different biomes here that really change the skybox. It looks super cool, and I have no idea what in the world this is. It looks absolutely terrifying. I don't know if it actually has like anything of value within it. Dense emerald ice. All right, so a quick trip to the end later. We didn't end up finding any chorus fruits. There were a ton of new biomes in the end, but I couldn't find any that had chorus fruit in them or any chorus plants. However, we did find an end city that happened to have more than a stack of end rods in it. So we've acquired 64 of those and a couple of shulker shells as well. We also got a bunch of end stone. Uh, I think a stack of end stone bricks is gonna be more than enough here. So now all we really need to do is get 16 bookshelves. 16 is just because we have 64 end rods. We can use those to make 16 bookshelves. Uh, so to make 16 bookshelves, we're going to need 48 books, which paper-wise we're going to be good because we, of course, have a ton of sugarcane over here. As for leather, we have a lot less. We could, if we wanted to, use blood magic, as we have been doing before, to make even more leather. However, I believe that we can also utilize the recipe from Tinker's Construct, this one right here, where we use paper with slime and blank patterns. We do have 500 slime, and the blank patterns are just sticks and planks. Once we have at least 48 books, we should then be able to craft up the bookshelves. There we go, we got 17, which is perfect. Uh, then from there, crafting those into end shelves is super easy. We have the dragon's breath, we have the ender pearls, and we have the end stone bricks. So we'll make hopefully 17 of those. It looks like we do need a little bit more end stone than I was anticipating, but we do have more ready to go. Boom and boom. From there, if we want to upgrade these to the pearlescent end shelves, we just need to craft them with yet more ender pearls and yet more end rods. And again, these are just a straight upgrade over the regular end shelves here. And then once we have all of those, we can now take those upstairs and we can use these. I actually didn't realize there was a, a challenge or a quest for that, but that's fine. Up here, we should be able to throw these down around the enchantment table. And as we do, we should see these bars start to fill up. Right now, our Quanta and Arcana are at 0% and our Eterna is at zero out of 50. We're not quite gonna fill it up to 50 because we don't have the Draconic end shelves, but we are gonna get pretty close. Real quick, let me go ahead and turn off this minimap because it is no longer needed. There we go. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll kind of double that up like this. And then we've got two left, which I guess we can put maybe here and here, like that. And now in here, we should see this number ideally go up. We actually might have to put some lapis in there. And then also potentially even put the thing we want to enchant in as well. Yeah, here we go. So you'll see that our Arcana is max. It's at 100%. Our Quanta is not quite there. It's at 90%, which I think is still fine. And then our Eterna is as high as it can get with these bookshelves at 40 out of 50. So now the next problem that we run into is levels. We have 52 levels right now. If we're going to enchant each piece of armor at level 8, we're going to need a ton more levels. Thankfully, that is where our creative tank comes back into play. We do not currently have a creative tank. We could request one. Um, however, I think for now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably 
temporarily going to disconnect the refined storage system here. Uh, to do that, I think the easiest way, as I mentioned in the last stream, uh, is probably going to be to just take the card, the network card, out of this. Uh, can I rename this network card over here? Yeah. Britannia stuff is what I'll call this. There we go. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Let me go check real quick that uh, this is now disconnected. Yeah, that is now disconnected. The reason for that is that I'd like to be able to use my blood altar um, without it being constantly used for making thermalities. And right now we don't need any more mana, at least in the short term. So having this offline is fine. We can just put that in the system and we can reconnect that by putting the Britannia stuff network card back in the network transmitter when we need more mana in the future. Uh, for now, what we can do is we can grab this creative fluid tank. We can place that down anywhere, really. Let's go ahead and put it uh, for now. Hmm, I'm going to put it like here. You'll see why in just a second. And then what we should be able to do is using mob grinding utilities, we can craft the XP drain singularity tank. This is made with a regular singularity tank, which is iron and glass, super easy to do. And then we also need some eyes of ender, which we can make just as soon as we craft down one of our blaze rods. And then from there, assuming we have iron bars, we can craft up the XP drain singularity tank. And then if you place this down, you can actually stand on top of it to pull XP out of the player stood on it into the tank. And you see where this is going. As soon as we have a bucket's worth, we can pull that out, place it in here. And then there is also this guy, the XP tap, attach it to the side of a tank and it will turn fluid XP back into orbs. This is super easy to make. We can grab one of these, place it down like this, right click it and we have an infinite amount of XP. And if we wanted to, we can even take this one step further. We can do this, we can do this, and we can make it rain experience, and we can just stand underneath, and we are gonna get an infinite amount of XP. As much XP as we like is available to us, if we really wanted to, and I might even, we could probably move this over by one to allow us to put four XP taps on here. Now, people do make a good point uh, in the Twitch chat in that if we wanted to, we could go ahead and simply enchant books because then we can just do this a bunch of times. We can get a bunch of different books with some different uh, enchants on it, and then we can choose which books we want to apply to which pieces of armor. Interesting. Chan has pointed out that the Apotheosis mod also adds these tomes. So you can make, for example, a tome of helmets that only accepts helmet enchantments. And it seems pretty easy to make. We are going to need yet more books. We'd need five in total. And then from there, we can then craft that with a blaze rod to get five tomes of helmets. And presumably... We can just place these directly into here, and that's only going to give us uh, enchantments that are relative to helmets. So if we go ahead for this level 80 enchant, we get Aqua Affinity, Berserker's Fury 3, End Veil, <laughs> Rebounding 5, and Tombstone Soulbound. I have no idea what half of those do. So before we go any further, I have moved the Creative Fluid Tank up to above the enchantment table. We're at level 130 here, so now we can just turn these on and we can kind of enchant whilst continuing to increase our, uh, our levels, which is fantastic. But the Twitch chat has also convinced me that the library here, the enchantment library from Apotheosis is gonna be worth investing in because the enchantment library is going to allow us to take the enchantments that we like off of these enchantment books and then pick which ones we want to apply to our armor. So the enchantment library is made with uh, four ender chests, four hell shelves, and one enchantment table. The hell shelves are the only bit about this that's particularly difficult. Uh, these are made Kind of similarly to the other shelves, these are also uh, from Apotheosis, and they do add a Turner and Quanta, they're just not quite as good as the end shelves that we've got. These here require nether bricks, they require blaze rods, bookshelves, and then potions of regeneration. These do require gas tiers, and of course, awkward potions. I do believe we have some nether wart lying around, we've got 39. And then as for gas tiers, we've only got two, however, we do have uh, creeper glands, these catalyzing glands here, that we can use to make more gas tiers, should we need them. And given that we only need four hell shelves, that means that really we only need like two gas tiers to make the uh, the six potions of regeneration that are going to give us those hell shelves. So that really shouldn't be too difficult. So let's go ahead and craft up a regular old Minecraft brewing stand. We can place this down uh, for now, I guess, maybe just over in, uh, in a corner here. From there, we can grab some bottles out of the system. Uh, we can fill those with water, one, two, three, and drop those in like so. We can also grab some more blaze powder. I think we might need a bit more than one. And of course we can grab some nether wart. Boom and boom. That is our first round of awkward potions. Let's get another round going. 
And there are the other three awkward potions. Let's swap those nether wart out for Gastias and then do the same thing, but with the awkward potions. There is potion of regeneration one. And there is the other three potions of regeneration. We currently have 30,000 nether eggs. So uh, let's go ahead and begin smelting some of that up. Again, we can smelt that a stack at a time over in the old rainbow furnace. And from there, we just need to get ourselves four more bookshelves, which is once again, just more paper, more blank patterns, more slime to make more books. Once we have the books, we can make one, two, three, four regular bookshelves. And from there, we should have everything it takes to make one, uh, two, three, and four hell shelves. Nice. And then from there, that should be everything I believe that we need. Oh, of course, we need the ender chests here, which are going to be four eyes of ender, which does require yet more blaze powder. Let's go ahead and get uh, enough for four eyes of ender. One, two, three, four. From there, we should have more than enough obsidian to make one, two, three, four ender chests. And with that, we should have almost everything that we need in order to make the library. Nice. So this is a super powerful block because what this allows us to do, if we go ahead and place this down, uh, let's go ahead and place it down, I guess, like maybe here for now. What we can do with this is in here, we can place our enchantment books. And that's going to then store those enchantments on the left hand side. And I believe we can put multiple books into here and, and basically store all the enchants that we want to have. And now going forward, if we ever want to use one of those enchants, so let's say right here, we've got rebounding, it says max level available five, and then it says point stored. Uh, if we wanted to pull out, let's say rebinding two, we could click here once, gets us rebounding one, if we click again, it gets us rebounding two, a third time rebounding three, you get the idea, we can go all the way up to five, and then we can take out the rebounding five book, and using an anvil, we can apply it to our chest plate or our helmet or our leggings or whatever it is we want to apply it to and if we realize we don't want it we can just put it back in and so basically this is going to allow us to use these tomes to get all of the enchants that we want from the enchantment table and then over here we can take those throw them into the library uh, and use them to put whatever specific enchants we want onto any piece of armor that we have Okay, so quite a bit of enchanting later. And we now have quite a lot of enchantments in our enchantment library. At the moment, we have our jetpack on and we don't have a chest plate. However, whilst we were in the end earlier, we did unlock a new trinket. This one right here, Magical Feathers, which actually gives you creative flight. And so even if I take my jetpack off, we can go into the trinket menu, we can add a new trinket and we have creative flight, which is very OP. I don't know if you just get it randomly. Uh, people mentioned in other packs, you might be able to craft trinkets. I actually don't know if that's possible here. Yeah, no, it just says creative flight. So I think you can craft it, but uh, if you're lucky enough to get it, it gives you creative flight. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and put the Batania stuff network card back into the transmitter again to begin making mana, because now we have the ability to make, to get three more terra steel and make a terra steel chest plate. Um, I believe that if we get a mana tablet, which is fairly easy to make. We are going to need a little bit more in the way of living rock, which we can totally do over here. And we're also going to need a mana pearl as well. Uh, but I believe that if we carry a mana tablet with us that has mana, it's going to allow the terrestrial armor to repair itself on the fly. Once we have that living rock, we can make our mana tablet. And this is basically just a way to move mana around. So uh, over here, you'll see that by default, there is a blue arrow. If you look at the mana pool whilst holding the wand of the forest, there is a blue arrow going from the mana tablet icon to the mana pool icon. If you uh, shift or right click, you can swap that arrow around. And then if you drop the mana tablet into the mana pool, it will begin moving mana from the mana pool into the mana tablet pretty cool stuff. And then that can then be used to repair the terrestrial armor. You'll see it's now fully repaired because it's using some of the mana in that mana tablet to repair itself. You can take this one step further. Uh, you can get mana rings. These guys right here are bands. There is the band of mana and then the greater band of mana. Uh, I believe these essentially just give you even more 
mana storage, so you can store even more mana on the go than you normally would. So if we do one, two, three, four, we can get ourselves a mana bend. It does require this here. I think we can do that. We totally can, and it even carries over the mana as well. Uh, if we have a spare Terra Steel, we could even upgrade it to the greater bend of mana. And then the added benefit, of course, you can do the same thing here. You can drop it in, and uh, if it's set up to pull mana from the pool, it will do that. Uh, but you can even put these into your bobble slot because it does say slot ring. So we can put it down here and we don't even have to carry it around in an inventory slot. We can just have it in one of our curious slots. Speaking of curious slots, we do also have a quest reward here for the Globe Trotters Sash, which is another ring from Britannia, which I believe increases our movement speed, makes us a little faster. I don't know if we can combine that with our other trinket. People have also reminded me, now that we have unlimited XP, we can also click to unlock all like almost all of these trinket levels here we could stand underneath our uh, xp tap over here and uh, and use that to unlock even more of these uh even more of these trinket slots okay so a little while later we've unlocked quite a few trinket slots here we probably could go further but we don't really have that many trinkets and so i believe if we wanted to here we could start really just applying all of these trinkets here you can use ender pearls infinitely we can provide Frost Walker, so if we walk over water, that's going to turn it to ice, I believe. Creepers targeting us will not spawn explosions. Fire Mind, enemies targeting you will burn on fire. Bucko Enchanting, no bookshelves needed for enchanting. I don't know if we need this one, but we have it. Uh, Bigfoot, baby monsters are scared of you. Perfect. Uh, the Spider, we can climb walls. We've had that one on for a while now. Uh, Miner's Pick improves your mining speed. And then we also have Magneto, which we used earlier whilst in the end to get some of the end rods uh, as well. This allows us to uh, magnetically pull items towards us. And it looks like we are actually one trinket slot shy of being able to get every single trinket applied at once. Chat is right in that I don't want Frostwalker because if I do, then whenever I walk past my unlimited water sources, like that one over there, it is uh, almost certainly going to turn to ice. That's fine. We can still unlock the next slot, and then we can still add the, uh, the rock candy. Does the rock candy... I, I think... I was wondering whether... One, I also don't know if I want spider on all the time. I might take that off as well, actually. But uh, I don't know. That's fast. I'm wondering if... Oh, gosh. I'm wondering if that uh, stacks with the sash. Like, if I get rid of the sash real quick. I think it does. I think that's fast, but I think this might be faster. And I assume it also applies to, to flying speed. Oh, it does. You can fly real fast. It might be too fast, <laughs> especially with the sash and the rock candy. Maybe we can get rid of the rock candy and probably still be quite quite fast. That seems pretty good. And if we uh, if we took the ring off, I assume we'd be uh, a little slower. Yeah, I think so. So I'm pretty sure that just the ring on its own, which doesn't, I believe, use mana, uh, is probably enough. So now while we wait for our mana pools to fill up with enough mana to get three more, uh, or maybe four more Terra Steel, depending on whether or not we want to upgrade the band of mana. Let's have a look at applying some enchantments to our pre-existing armor. So it's probably going to be easier if we bring our anvil over here. And then I believe what we probably want to do here is basically apply all the enchants that we want to one book. So here we can go with uh, Blast Protection 8. Uh, if you shift left click, it will do the maximum it can do. So you'll see on the left there, it's kind of hard to see because it's cut off a bit. But uh, if I press shift, it, it takes the level cost up from one to, to eight. Temporarily, I'm going to lower my GUI scale here. So yeah, you can see next level cost is one, max level cost is 128. We do have 1,259 stored, so we have more than enough points to do this. And that's going to add blast protection. From there, we could go ahead and add uh, whatever else we want to this. So for example, uh, if we wanted to do our boots first, we could add feather falling to that. That's going to give us feather falling and blast protection. We could add fire protection to that. That's going to give us all three on there. Uh, what else do we want here? Life mending could be useful. Life mending converts health into durability. So I believe as the armor takes damage, it then can use health to repair. I guess that's not useful if we have the Terra Steel armor because the mana is going to do that for us. Uh, people are pointing out Death Strider. Uh, sorry, Depth Strider. It increases movement speed while underwater, which might be useful. <laughs> we can go ahead and add that on. Projectile protection. Uh, we'll go with that. We've got a ton of points for that. We can put that on everything. Uh, regular protection. Again, we've got a bunch of points for that. Uh, we might need even more if we want to put project, uh, protection 7 on everything, but we can go ahead and add that to our uh, ever-increasing list of, of powerful uh, enchants on here. Uh, rebounding. Melee attackers may find themselves much further away. Let's go ahead and... That might be useful. That might not be useful. Um, depending on how close we want to be to the attacker, that might not be too useful for us. Uh, respiration we're probably not going to need. Shadow step, I think, is another one that we do want to add to our 
Boots. It reduces the distance. Uh, oh, reduces the distance from which creatures detect you. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and drop Shadow Step 8 onto that. They're never going to see us. Stable Footing is also useful. Uh, this one uh, negates the mining speed penalty for flying. So if we fly whilst using stable footing, uh, which is just stable footing one, that's fine. Uh, that's going to allow us to, uh, to fly and mine as we normally would. So I accidentally pulled out the book. So we do now have this book here, and then we've got this book as well. Uh, I think we want to add Tombstone Soulbound. And I also think we want to add, finally, right at the bottom, Unbreaking 7. So let's take that as well. Let's go with all of this stuff here. We've got Blast Protection 8, Feather Falling 8, Fire Protection 7, Depth Strider 6, Icy Thorns 3, Occult Aversion 3, Projectile Protection 8, Protection 7, Shadow Step 5, Stable Footing, Thorns 5, and then here we can add on Unbreaking 8 to the list, and we can also add Tombstone Soulbound as well. We need three more enchantment levels, which should be extremely doable. Boom, boom, and boom. And then from there, we can take that and add that to our Terrasteel Boots. We can go boom, and boom, we need 102 levels to make that happen, but that is completely fine. And then we're basically going to do the exact same thing for our leggings and for our helmet. And then eventually, once we have enough Terra Steel, we'll also do the exact same thing for our chest plate. So, a little while later, what I've done here is I've placed down the Creative Fluid Tank. I've moved this over from uh, where it was before. We've made four new Singularity Tanks. These are just regular tanks that can hold uh, a little bit of liquid, 32 buckets worth, to be exact. And then I've put down 16 taps. Now, the trinket that we have here, the Magneto Trinket, if you right-click the air with an empty hand whilst you're active it will pull all of the xp nearby to you so we can stand underneath it hold right click and that's going to keep pulling all of the xp from these tanks and from these taps directly into me at just a staggering speed and once we get to a high enough level boom boom and boom and now we have extremely powerful terra steel boots and all we need to do now is do the exact same thing with our helmet and our leggings and a fair bit of enchanting later, and we now have three enchantment books. One for our helmet, one for our leggings, and one for our soon-to-be-made Terra Steel chestplate. We do now have a full four mana pools, once again, of mana. So all of these are currently, once again, offline. Uh, that is completely fine. In fact, real quick, let's grab the three diamonds, three iron ingots, and three ender pearls that we're going to need to make the remaining three terra steel in fact we'll go ahead and do four that way we can also make one extra terra steel to allow us to upgrade our band of mana and while we wait for that to complete we do now have a staggering 1317 levels and so over in here uh, we should not have any problems whatsoever adding the helmet book to our helmet uh, this has got basically all of the helmet specific enchants most of these are fairly self-explanatory. A few that I wasn't aware of include End Veil, which is about halfway down. If you have this, then Endermen don't trigger, like they won't come after you if you look at them whilst wearing it. I did accidentally put Curse of Bones 5 on this book, which you'll see there is a chest plate only enchant. Uh, we could take it off and redo it all again, but I didn't really feel that was necessary. Plus, we've got more than enough Curse of Bones in our library, uh, way more than we actually needed for the chest plate. You'll see here the chest plate also does have Curse of Bones 5, so I didn't really think that was uh, going to be too big of a deal. Let's get another Terra Steel going here real quick. While we wait for that, let's go ahead and do the leggings here. Again, there aren't any legging-specific enchants, as far as I know. At least we didn't get any from all of the enchanting that we did, and so uh, these are mostly just generic enchants that are going to be good for our leggings. And then, of course, finally, we have our chest plate book, which we're going to make uh, momentarily. Of course, we do have to uh, either move the spark or, alternatively, uh, we can also put down multiple sparks, which people have been recommending in the Twitch chat. And I do think that's going to be a sensible idea here. That way, we don't have to keep moving the spark over and over and over again every time we want to uh, to make more Terra Steel. If we just put one on each of our four mana pools, then the Terrestrial Agglomeration plate will be able to use the mana in all four pools to make the Terra Steel, and it might even make the Terra Steel a little bit faster as well. And once we have those four sparks down, let's go ahead and do one, two, three again. That might be a little faster. I'm actually not sure. I think there is a limit on how fast it can go. And we might have already hit that with our uh, previous setup. Although maybe not, maybe that was actually faster. I'm not too sure. I'll know when I edit this because I'll be able to see how long 
the uh, the first one took us there. But uh, this is is basically good to go. And we do have all of the Terra Steel required now to make the Terra Steel chest plate. Of course, much like all of the other pieces of armor, we do have to make a specific rune. This one is the Rune of Summer, which thankfully is one of the easier runes to make. We need the Rune of Air, the Rune of Earth, one Melon Slice, one Slime Ball, and two Sand. So Melon we have. Uh, we were using it earlier in our squeezer. Slime balls we have quite a few of, despite the number that we've used to make books today. We also should have more than enough sand. We do indeed. And then we do also have uh, the air rune and the earth rune ready to go. And so once again, over here, I think we should have enough mana left in that mana pool. If not, we can always use uh, our mana tablet or mana bend to move mana from one mana pool to another. That doesn't seem to be necessary. It looks like we are going to be good to go here. Boom and boom. Let's go ahead and make some more mana steel. That's going to allow us to make the mana steel chest plate. And once we have that, that should be everything that we need to make the terra steel chest plate, completing our set of terra steel armor. Of course, before we put it on, let's go ahead and add the enchantment book for the chest plate here. Boom. And there we go. We now have a full glowing suit of essentially maxed out terra steel armor. This has so many enchants and should be hopefully more than enough to get us through the Twilight Forest. Now, the final thing that we're going to need before we head on through, and actually before I forget, let's go ahead and do something like this to get the greater band of mana. And then as we did before with the mana tablet, we can just drop this into some of our mana pools, make sure they're set to pull mana from the mana pool into the mana tablet, or in this case, mana bend, that we can then carry around to give our terrestrial armor a ton more durability. But uh, the final thing that I was referring to is, of course, some kind of weapon. Up until now, we've been using the Sentient Sword, which is pretty good. It does have Sharpness 5 and Looting 3, but its durability is pretty low, and it doesn't deal a ton of damage even with all of those upgrades. We also have the Diamond Sword here, which is less good. It has Capturing 5 and Unbreaking 3, but again, doesn't deal a ton of damage. I think if we really want to get uh, the maximum amount of damage that we're going to be able to get, we're going to have to start looking at getting a Tinker's Construct Sword of some kind. So uh, if we head on down to our anvil over here, there are, I believe, three different weapons that we can make from Tinker's. There is the Sword, it says the sword is a universal weapon. Sweep attacks keep enemy hordes at bay. Also good against cobwebs. There's the dagger. It's a light weapon capable of quick strikes from either hand. And then there is the cleaver. Is a weapon for a smeltery master. High range attacks keep cut through the toughest of foes. And so I think we're going to go with the cleaver here. There are trade-offs between the cleaver and the sword. Uh, the benefit of the dagger is that you can use it in your offhand and it can attack very quickly. The sword is kind of a balance between attack and damage. It can attack somewhat fast, like a regular Minecraft sword, but deals less damage. And then the cleaver takes it to the other extreme where it has a much higher attack damage, but has a slower attack speed. And I think this is going to be good for us. We should be able to use some modifiers to allow us to make the cleaver faster and also allow us to, uh, to increase the damage on the cleaver as well. So to make it, uh, also real quick, I'm going to turn down the uh, the villager sound effect because I can just hear him making sounds in the background there. I'm going to make sure he's uh, just a tiny bit quieter. And I think I'll also do the same thing for just the ambient chicken sound as well because that clucking is going to get real annoying real fast. But back in here, if we're going to make a cleaver, we need a broad blade, we need two tough handles, and we need a large plate. So uh, if we look in JI, if we type in uh, broad blade, it shows us all of the different broad blades that we can make with all of the different materials that you can use for Tinker's Construct. And if we hold shift, we can see the different stats of those blades. I did look through a little bit between streams, and I think that the best material for the blade here is going to be manualin. This has an attack damage of 3.5, which is higher than I believe anything else. Uh, the blaze here comes close. It has an attack damage of 3. There is then also this one up here. There's Nahortal. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce this, but uh, basically this is obsidian. You make it by pulling molten obsidian over a wooden blade. And this, again, is almost there. It does 3 uh, attack damage, uh, again, close to the 3.5. But once again, much like the Blazing Blood, significantly less durability. And so I do think it's going to be worth us investing in a manual in blade here. Then if we look at the large plates, it's a similar story where the manual in does have a really high attack damage, 3.5. I think it's basically the exact same here. So if we wanted to maximize just attack damage 
on the base weapon, I think a manual enlarge plate would be the way to go. And then as far as tough tool rods go, here you'll see that attack damage, durability, attack speed, and mining speed all have a multiplier. So if we were to use a manual in tool rod, it would multiply the attack damage we already have by 1.25, which is not too bad. However, in this scenario, the obsidian tool rod does have a higher attack damage multiplier. It does lower your durability and attack speed a little bit, but it does get you the most attack damage. I don't think we're going to use any of those though, because I think instead we're going to max our weapon out with as many upgrades as we possibly can. And I think to do that, we want to invest in rose gold parts. And for those of you familiar with earlier versions of Tinker's Construct, in the newer versions of Tinker's, rose gold kind of acts like paper did previously. You can no longer make uh, paper tool rods or paper bindings or anything like that. But uh, rose gold allows you to get additional modifiers for your weapon, which then allows us to upgrade the weapon even further, utilizing those extra modifiers. And so my plan here is to have a manual in broad blade followed by two rose gold tough handles and one rose gold large plate. Thankfully, rose gold isn't too bad. It does hurt the durability a, a fair bit, but it does actually increase our attack speed, which is what we want for the cleaver. We want our cleaver to be fast, and it doesn't have a negative effect on the attack damage either, which is a nice bonus. And on top of that, the rose gold is super easy to make. It's just copper and gold. Three copper to one gold gets you four rose gold. And so uh, real quick here, we need four ingots worth to make the large plate. And then each of the tough rods requires three ingots. So we need six more for 10 in total. Uh, that means we're gonna have to make 12 with nine copper and three gold. We might need a little bit more than this because again, uh, this is kind of full. Uh, if we wanted to, in fact, you know what? People have been uh, complaining in the YouTube comments and I think rightfully so. What I'm going to do here real quick, I'm gonna get a fluid pipe. We can move this over like that. And of course, if we grab our wrench, we can kind of disconnect it there and then extract around into the tank to allow us to uh, use the smeltery again. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is once again, for the second time today, I'm going to disconnect the Britannia stuff card from the network transmitter that should stop lava buckets being sent down to our blood altar. I'm going to go ahead and request another creative fluid tank, start and start. Uh, for now, we can uh, once again repurpose this creative fluid tank right here. Uh, again, in the future, we probably are not going to need more XP. I don't think we're going to need more than 1,200 levels, but of course, if we need to, we can always create a new fluid tank. And uh, again, the one that I've just requested is hopefully gonna go uh, back over here to make more iron, should we need it for our Batania setup. But uh, this guy right here, I'm gonna place down like that. I'm then going to get rid of this pipe here and here. I think we might be able, if I request a bucket, to just extract some of this blazing blood directly out of the seared drain, we totally can. Then we can do this, we can set this to extract. We can break the controller, that's gonna clean out the entirety of the mess that we've made inside of the smeltery so far, giving us a fresh clean slate to put in our copper and our gold. Then should allow us to very quickly and easily get the 12 rose gold that we're after. We are almost certainly now going to want to move that blaze spawner because that really is no longer needed in here. Going forward, if we want more blaze rods, we can do the same thing we've been doing here with the uh, the rod cast and the casting table, but just over here directly on the tank, much like we're doing with our basins over there. So uh, again, we're not gonna need that, I don't think, going forward, unless we specifically need to kill blazers for, uh, for one reason or another. For now though, we do already have the tough handle gold cast and the large plate gold cast as well. So we can go ahead and pull that out. We are also going to have to make some manulin, and the blade itself here requires eight ingots worth of manulin. To make manulin, we need cobalt and ancient debris. Three cobalt and one ancient debris gets four manulin, so we need six cobalt and two ancient debris. Uh, ancient debris being measured in ingots is a little odd, but it looks like one ancient debris gets us quote unquote two ingots worth. Of, of ancient debris, and thankfully we do have 1,200 ancient debris lying around, and we also have 523 cobalt as well. So uh, if we do three cobalt, that should double up in the smell tray to give us six cobalt, and then the ancient debris should give us the two ingots required. Over here, the plate is done, so we can take this out, and we can throw in the tough handle cast. I'm pretty sure the tough handle is, yeah, is what we need. I'm used to it being called the tough tool rod, but uh, in the newer versions, 
it is called the Tough Handle. There's number one. And while number two smelts up, we are going to have to get that large sword blade. So for that, we're going to have to once again place two gold into the smelt rate to make a new cast. And we're also going to have to put down our pot builder again, I believe. So if we uh, put this down, let's say here, and we grab a blank pattern, we can put that in, we can add some cobblestone, and we can craft a stone broad blade, at which point we can then pull the molten gold directly over that like so, and then if we move the manual in to the bottom, we can pull that out as well. It looks like I might have miscalculated on the rose gold. Oh no, I didn't, but we had to make a larger batch, which is why we have some left over. That is perfectly fine. Once again, just to keep it clean, I'm gonna break and replace the smeltery. Um, it's not like we're particularly short on any of the fluids, so we might as well uh, keep that as clean as we possibly can going forward. And now over in the anvil, we can put in the broad blade, the tough handles, and the large plate to get as a manulin rose gold cleaver, which by default has a durability of 1,494, an attack damage of 9.62, and an attack speed of 1.12. But most importantly, it has five upgrade slots. Whereas usually uh, without a rose gold tool, you would only have, I believe it's three upgrade slots. You'll see down here that uh, rose gold goes great with a bonus upgrade. So we'll go ahead and take this. Also, in the new version of Tinkers for 1.16, um, I believe what we can do here is we can take a golden apple like this, and if you add a golden apple to your weapon or tool or armor or whatever it is that you're making from Tinkers, this will convert your one ability point into two more upgrade points. So you'll see that uh, if we take it off, we have five upgrades on one ability. If we add it on, we get seven upgrades or seven modifier slots, uh, but we lose that one ability slot, which is a trade-off I'm going to make. And then if I'm not mistaken, there is one more way to get extra upgrade slots. And I believe that's with the dragon head modifier. Yeah, the draconic modifier here. So if you get a dragon head, you can then add that to your tool to give you another ability slot, and then you can add yet another golden apple to your weapon to turn that extra ability slot into another two modifier slots. And so if we were to get a dragon head, that would take us up to nine upgrade slots in total. We're not going to do that just yet, uh, because we did do quite a bit of flying around in the end earlier, and we didn't find a single end ship, which would definitely be the easiest way to find a dragon head. Uh, we could also, if we wanted to, make a separate sword that we add the beheading upgrade to, and then try and fight the end dragon to get the head that way, uh, which is possible, but that's a lot of work, and I really don't think we're going to need those extra two modifiers to get a sword that is going to be more than good enough to get us through the Twilight Forest. Now, when it comes to upgrading this or choosing which upgrades to pick, there are a ton of modifiers that you can use to upgrade your weapon. Uh, if you press U while hovering over your tool, you'll see there are 32 pages of modifiers, so 64 modifiers in total that do all kinds of stuff depending on what it is you add. Uh, there is the unbreakable modifier. Uh, this was a little bit different in older versions of Tinkers, but uh, if you add this modifier to your weapon, the weapon will not lose durability whatsoever. This is a little expensive, so to make this happen, you need a Dragon's Breath, two Shulker Shells, and two Netherite Ingots, all of which we have. But this little triangle here points out that in order to add Unbreakable, you have to have Netherite and Reinforced 5 to apply. So uh, if we go ahead and type in Netherite over here, all of the Tinker's modifiers, by the way, can be found in JEI. Uh, they come in the form of these little books here. So uh, if I click on this book, you'll see that to add Netherite, super easy. It's a uh, one Netherite ingot. But in order to add Netherite, you have to first add either a diamond or an emerald, which is also fine. We could add a diamond if we wanted to. But we'd have to use one upgrade on the diamond, one upgrade on the Netherite. We then have to use our other five upgrades on Reinforced. That's this one right here, which we could do. We do have seven modifier slots. Uh, each reinforced upgrade does require 24 iron reinforcements, so we would need a bunch of iron and a bunch of obsidian. Thankfully, we do have infinite iron and infinite obsidian as well. So we could make this happen, and seven modifier slots is the exact number needed to make an unbreaking tool. However, I don't really think it's worth it. The tool's not bad, and having it never break would be great, but it's going to be fairly easy for us to repair this in the future, especially once we get a creative tank down for unlimited manualing. We can just pull the manualing ingots and repair it in the anvil here. And so I think in the long run, it's going to be a lot better for us to just upgrade this to be more powerful and to be a better sword than to never have to worry about, uh, about repairing it in the future. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to add a diamond because unlike in previous versions of Tinkers, the diamond here actually adds not only 
durability, which it does. It more than doubles the durability that we had previously, but it also increases our attack damage and it also increases our mining speed. The mining speed obviously doesn't matter whatsoever, but an increase to attack damage and, an, and a massive increase to durability is welcome. On top of that, I think we will go for the netherite upgrade. Again, this is kind of just like the diamond upgrade where it bumps up the durability, not by a ton, but by a little bit. And uh, again, more importantly for us, it bumps up the attack damage from 11 to 12, which I think is well worth it. And then on top of that, we can also add some nether quartz to the mix as well. Uh, it's easier to do this in a block form, and that's going to even further increase our attack damage. Uh, you can put, I believe, up to five sharp modifiers on. Yeah, you can do this five times. So nine blocks is one, so you could do 45 blocks in total. So uh, the first one is going to take us from 12 to almost 14 attack damage. We can do another one, which is going to take us to 15, then to 17. And then if we wanted to use our... Oh, no, we can do one more here. It's going to take us to almost 19. And then if we wanted to go all the way, we have one more modifier left here that can take us up to over 20 attack damage, which I think might well be worth it. I have had a look through a lot of the modifiers that we have on here, and I don't really think that there's another modifier that I want more than just extra attack damage. We could, of course, add redstone to it. Uh, if we added redstone, that would increase the speed of our weapon. So if we did this, we could increase the attack speed from 1.12 to 1.18, which isn't really a massive increase. You'll see here that the sword is not super fast, but it is extremely powerful. And so I think we will go ahead and just add more nether quartz here and take this to the maximum damage that we can feasibly do. And I think this is it. I think this is the weapon that we're going to take with us. It has almost 4,000 durability, 20 attack damage, a fairly reasonable attack speed. And then because we have a manual in blade, we also get insatiable. Uh, it says during combat, you deal more and more damage every time you hit an enemy. So every time we get a subsequent hit, we're actually going to increase the amount of damage we do. And so hopefully uh, this is going to be super useful against some of the, uh, the longer, harder boss fights in the Twilight Forest. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, enchant a Tinker Sword. It would be super useful if you could, but uh, it doesn't work. You can't put it, well, you can put it in there, but it doesn't actually allow you to enchant it whatsoever. It might be a little too powerful if uh, if that was the case, but I think that we are basically ready, but maybe more than ready, maybe uh, a little overprepared to start in the Twilight Forest. It has taken me a lot longer today than I thought it would to, uh, to get all our armor, all our enchants, and our new sword up and running, and so unfortunately, we are out of time for today's episode, but Next time, we'll come back and straight away, we will jump through the portal to the Twilight Forest and we'll start seeing if we can't beat some of these Twilight Forest bosses. We can go ahead and tick this box right here, get ourselves 10 XP, which is definitely something that we're going to need, taking us up to 1,121 XP levels. There are quite a few bosses here and I believe we are gonna have to do basically all of these in order to get to, uh, to the Lamp of Cinders at the bottom there, but I think we can do it. I think we are well enough prepared. We'll get some food. We'll make sure that our uh, greater band of mana is as full as it can be. And I'll probably end up moving this as well between streams because this is a little bit of an eyesore. I might keep it around, but maybe just put it uh, in its own place. Maybe I'll embed it in the wall on the other side or something like that. Uh, also, before I go, one thing that I did find out between streams, you can actually place these uh, books just down on the ground like this. Uh, in the top left there, we have the supplementaries mod. And you can put like multiple books into one like block space, which I think looks kind of cool. And so I might go ahead and like place a couple of books just around the base to kind of decorate and, uh, and fill out some of the empty space that we have over here. I think that could look quite nice. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.